We're answering all your questions about cybersecurity, cybercrime, along with how to get the resources that you need if you've been a victim of that. That is going along with a partnership with 211. That is that same resource that you can call to find a free COVID test to child care that is available. So our experts today, Heather Black is the 211 director statewide. Kristen Judge is the CEO of Cybercrime Support Network. All right, Kristen, this story, uh, this question, excuse me, is for you. It says, my Facebook was hacked. Now I'm locked out. It won't let me start a new one either. Someone even got into my Netflix account, eBay account, and now they're trying to set up an Instagram account in my name and I am very frustrated. Yeah, we see this a lot and social media or any kind of account that you have has to have two things. Number one, very strong passwords, but strong passwords don't even help if you use them over and over again in, in the, for other accounts. But there's something called multi-step factor authentication or two-factor authentication, um, two-step authentication, and everybody needs to add those to all those accounts I just talked about, social media, Netflix, uh, your bank requires it. It's similar to when you go on your bank online and they send you a code to your phone. You need to do that for all your other accounts too. And we have more information about that on fraudsupport.org. And when you go to fraudsupport.org and you live in North Carolina, you'll also get the reminder that you can call 211 if you want to talk through that with somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and part of dealing with all of that is getting up with a lot of those social media accounts, which is not the easiest thing either. But we give people the step-by-step -step guide and also where to report on those social media sites. We have the actual links so people don't have to try and figure out where do I go to report this mm -hmm. on the social media site. And that is a huge help because you're already upset about what has just happened and you don't want to be searching for all of those things. So someone actually kind of walks you through it. All right, um, Heather, uh, we have a question about, uh, we get many questions uh, about evictions and what can be done or is there any help for people who are facing eviction? Yeah, that's a great question. So Legal Aid of North Carolina is doing some amazing work in helping people understand their rights as tenants. Um, again, there's there's you know so many people in this situation right now who have not been able to pay their rent in full. So you can call Legal Aid. Um, their number is 866-219-5262. 866-219-5262. They have an amazing group of attorneys who are able to help you, walk you through it, explain to you what your rights are, um, I think one of the most important things is, is to talk to them or, an, or or another attorney before you make any decisions, before you leave the property, before you do anything. Um, because once you leave a property, you do uh, really make yourself vulnerable as far as your rights. So uh, definitely talk to an attorney and Legal Aid is there to help you out. They're great people. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is definitely a resource that 211 can point you to easily. Um, so a lot of people are saying, okay, I can't get my money back from a cyber crime. So what's the use in reporting it? That's a great question. And so if we keep reporting, even though you may not be able to get your money back yet, if we have 500 people report the same exact crime, then the law enforcement folks can put that all together. And there's some, been some pretty big busts of people in a Nigerian romance scam. And then the federal government works and the state government work to helpfully get some money back for people. But there's never just one person being attacked and losing $500. There's always thousands in that scam. And so if we all report, then we will be able to start taking down these bad guys. And there are times when, depending on how much money you have lost, you may be able to get it back. Uh, also with the Federal Trade Commission, when a lot of people lost money, they got Western Union to actually pay people back. So there is a chance to get money back. It may be down the road, uh, but it's important that we all know what's going on. And then uh, we can start taking down some more of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. All right, Heather, this is, I'm sure, a question that you get often, and I know you have to field it in a certain way. It says, um, if employees are not wearing a mask at a restaurant, do I call 211 or what do I do? Yeah, I um, appreciate the question. No need to call us at 211. Um, we, we understand your frustration. Um, I think also no need to call um, really local law enforcement. It, it, it is a local law enforcement issue, but I think we need to be realistic about what their capacity is. Uh, you know, as a consumer, you have, you know, the power of your pocketbook. So I think that that's decisions that we can each individually make. I can certainly understand people having concerns um, about their, their family safety. So I think you just have to make your individual decision um, about what choices you want to make. Um, Kristen, quickly, this person says, do you know or get calls about the uptick of text message scams within the last month? Absolutely. Um, we've definitely been seeing that trend here too. And we encourage people, if you don't know 
the person that's texting you or calling you, you just never answer. So if you see a text message come from a number you don't have in your contacts, just don't answer it, delete it. If someone really needs to get a hold of you, they will leave you a message or they will tell you their name. So if something's coming in from a stranger on your phone, regardless of it's text or uh, a call, ignore it. And that's one of those things people, I think, are so um, used to just picking up a phone when it rings. Yeah, yeah, not anymore, not in the world we live in, especially with the COVID scams. They have been skyrocketing. Heather's been looking at that in North Carolina. Um, and they're coming in from phone, text message, email, however they can. You need to not engage with people unless you started the engagement. If you went to them first and you looked at the number you were going to and you knew it was your bank, that's fine. But if someone's checking in on you or, or calling you or texting you first and you did not ask them to, it's most likely a scam. Mm -hmm. And if it's somebody you really want to talk to, they're going to leave you a message. You can call them back. <laughs> That's Absolutely. always a good rule of Every thumb. Time. All right. Exactly. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate both of your time and your expertise. Um, we talked about a lot of ways that you can have resources right at your fingertips. So what we want to do is we want to show you the article on our website right now that takes you to the 211 website uh, for United Way so that you can kind of look at it and also tells you a little bit more about uh, the cybersecurity hotline as well.